that you do give us amazing grace. I thank you, God, that you know the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end. I thank you, God, that the plan that you have for us is good. I thank you, Father, that you don't look beyond the place that we are with you. When we ask you to forgive us, it is done. You don't remember it anymore. I thank you that forgiveness is life-changing. I thank you, God, that not only can we receive it from you, but we can give it to others. And so today I pray forgiveness in the hearts of your people, whether they need forgiveness from you or they need to forgive others. And, Lord, that we keep our eyes focused on you and you alone because as our eyes are focused on others, <laughs> We definitely are not focused on you. So, God, I just ask that you have your way in our hearts and in our minds today. Open up the eyes of our hearts today, God. Open up the eyes of our hearts. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. 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 It can be, yes, because as you prophesy truth, truth is what makes you free, but if you don't receive it, it's really not your truth. It's not even your reality. And that's why sometimes so often that somebody can speak truth to you and me, but it doesn't do anything. Why? Because it's truly not something that you're receiving. It's not your reality. Your truth is still over here in deception. Deception is in the church and in our lives like crazy. But what we need to do is for God to open the eyes of our hearts. Amen. Because he's the only one that can truly show us what is in the heart. Right. And so listen, remember in the, when Peter um, said to Jesus, Jesus was basically telling him about his death, right? And so we're getting ready to um, actually celebrate Resurrection Sunday coming up and, and about why we celebrate it. And, you know, but prior to going to the cross, um, Jesus, you know, was telling his disciples what was going to come and what was going to happen. And so Peter took Jesus aside, hello, is this boldness, and rebuked Jesus, like God. How many of you rebuke God in your life? Don't put your hands up, but I'll put mine up because I know I have. But Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. To Peter, his disciple, who loved him very much, who served him very much. But what was the spirit behind this statement? It came from Satan. Because, see, the purpose of Jesus being here on earth was to walk this earth and to die for creation, for us. Why? Because the first Adam in the Garden of Eden was disobedient to Christ, or excuse me, to God. And so our lives could have been completely different. And so then what they call the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ, he walked it. And he set his eyes upon the, the mark of what, his, what he was here for, what his purpose was here for. And so different times, the enemy tried to come in and, 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 and not allow him to go where he's supposed to go. Now that's happening in your life as well. I just want you to know that. But it's important that you walk with a discernment because the discernment lets you understand good from evil. It gives you something here within you, not up here, because up here can be religious. But here, where the spirit of the living God dwells inside of you, dwells inside of me, is where the answers come from. And so Jesus said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. And I used to think, man, that was kind of harsh. You know, but that was the spirit that chose to operate through Peter. And because of Peter's emotions, not because of Peter who he is, but his emotions were all over the fact that Jesus was going to die. And he's like, man, I'll, I'll die for you. I'll do whatever. You know, you're not going to, this isn't going to happen. And so he was speaking out of his emotions. Amen. And so often we speak out of our emotions and we say things that, that we shouldn't be saying. And so the Lord wants us to check our hearts. So one of my sayings that I have spoken for years and years and years, y'all have heard it many times, is what's the motive of your heart? What is the motive of your heart? So if you would go with me just really quick um, to the word, let's go to... Um, Luke chapter 9, somebody will holler out the page number. It's in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. 1193. 1193 is the page number. The Bibles are the same in the church so that you're able to see what the Word says for yourself. You know, even though God has anointed me to bring forth the Word, you still have a responsibility. But again, 
again, I just want to say, somebody can give you truth all day long, but until it becomes your perception of truth, you can still be in bondage. And this is where Christians and people, but I want to talk about Christians today, okay? I want to talk about us and our behaviors because you're only responsible for your own behavior, and so am I. And so the world does not know the things of God. They just don't because they don't. They don't receive him. You know, they rather worship other things. And so that's, that's where it says if you love the world, then there's, ent there's, en there's, there's enmity. enmity between me and you because you're choosing to follow the world. And we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And so the things that we do are peculiar to the world because the world's like, what is up with that? How can, how can that person just keep forgiving? How can that person be that way? Well, if you ever have opportunity to really sit down and talk to a believer who's after Jesus, because I was a believer who wasn't after Jesus for many, many years, and I probably would have led you to my gospel, right? The JLT, the Joyce Living Translation. And so you would have got my translation of the gospel, and it would have probably led you into deception um, because I only wanted the gospel to fit my life so that I wasn't convicted. And at times God would convict me and so I would pull away from the gospel and away from anybody that might want to give me truth because I didn't want to hear it because I really wanted to live in my sin and the things that I was doing. And so, but eventually God has a way um, to get our attention if need be. Well, I was one of those people that needed to have God's attention. Um, and so he got it quickly, um, you know, uh, different times in my life. But I finally, finally got into Christ 100% at the age of 43. I was called into ministry at the age of 47. I did not immediately be awesome be able to follow God the way that I am today immediately. But something changed. See, this is the thing. If you are a believer and there's no change in your life, it's probably up here. Okay? Because when you get filled with the, with the Lord, change starts to happen within. But there's going to be times, even with the change within, that you have struggles. So don't, don't go kittywampus on me here, because you will have times of trouble, and you might question some things, but that doesn't mean that you don't love God. So if at 43, when I met the Holy Spirit out in, in St. Louis, Something happened to me, and I changed. Now, I changed in here, but I was still a hot mess out here. I still had the same desires. I, I still wanted to do some of the things that I was still doing, but they started not to be so fun anymore. They started not to be like there was more to life than just this, you know? And so I started seeing myself differently. I was hungry for God, and I, I wasn't super expensive excited about worship, but I was super excited about the word, and eventually God taught me about worship, but he wanted me to have the word first, because in worship, you can get pretty emotional, and you can get caught up in your emotions and the feelings of the atmosphere versus the foundation of who he is, and so instead of worshiping God, we're worshiping the beat of the music, you know, and I like to dance, so I love beats of music, you know, but I know the difference today. Day. I know the difference today. So the transformation started taking place um, in my life. And so I'm sharing this today because some people in this room um, believe that, you know, okay, I love God and I'm after God, but you're not really completely after God because you're still after the world and you want to only give God so much of you. And that's okay, but I'm going to tell you that's a pretty miserable place to live. And you'll never be satisfied. You'll never be satisfied. Your ebbs and flows will be huge, you know, instead of minor, and it will be hard for you. Um, so I just want you to be aware of that because God has more. The abundant life is more than what any of us really even know. I mean, I can talk about the abundant life, and I understand the peace of God, and I understand when I am not in peace of God. And then I have to, I, I, I have to talk, but sometimes my perception of what I'm hearing myself say is not what God was trying to show me. You understand that? Because we don't want to see. We don't want to see that we're being controlled by something other than God, especially 
as Christians. Well, I'm a Christian. How can I be controlled by other things? Because you can. You can be in deception. You can be in your flesh. You can just be having a bad day. You can be mad, anger, and so everything you're filtering is coming through anger or coming through wounds or coming through whatever. And so what God's trying to do in our lives is just clean us up. The word of God says that I, being the spirit of the living God, will cause you to change. And so a man or a woman can come to me and get in my face all day long about what I should be doing, but until I get the revelation of what God is saying about me, and about him and our relationship I will still be in my junk Amen. but we all have a responsibility to run after God we have a responsibility to get caught up in, in a good body of believers because you need each other but you need to understand that these people sitting in these chairs are not perfect they're going to be controlled by other things other than God at times not because they want to be but just because of they don't understand what's hidden in their hearts yet do you understand that so what's the motive of your hearts today think about the things that you've done in the last week maybe even a conversation you had today was the motive of your heart heart about you and how you could twist and turn to be able to feel better and so you're planning to have this conversation with Christina and you know that Christina has um, a gift of mercy so she's going to come up alongside of you and mercy all over you versus come to Pastor Joyce and Pastor Joyce might give you mercy but I'm going to give you truth and I'm going to tell you that you are accountable for you and you only Amen. don't be telling me how bad your husband is and don't be telling me how bad your wife is and that might, it might be true but I am not the judge of that what I'm going to do is help you look at you because that's what it took in my life. I needed to look at me and understand and take, uh, take ownership of all my stuff regardless of what I suffered at the hands of others. It does not matter. What matters is where I am today and what God is doing today in my life. So I got to own it. You understand that? I've had to go back and apologize to my children. I've had to go back and take care of some business in my life because my perception of everything that happened to me was through a victim mentality. And therefore, most of what happened to me became bigger than what it really was. And it wasn't because I wanted it to be. It's just it's the way my filters were. I I had many of them, right? Then behind that filter of victim mentality was anger and, and, and then pride because I expect you that you owe me now. You don't owe me anything and I don't owe you anything. We only worship God and allow him to change us. So always check the motive of your heart. Dan and I have a pretty good marriage because God has transformed me and him. But I just know what he did in me. But Dan can share about his life. And if you all look at Dan, you think he's like a perfect man and he could never do anything wrong, you know. That's not true. <laughs> you all know me. I, I like throwing out there. You know, I'm, I'm that way. But he is so compassionate for the things of God. He has a heart after God. But if he wouldn't have went through what he went through, he would not have the heart he has today. So what the enemy meant for harm to what he had to walk through and how he felt he was, you want you know how you make mud pies? And you know, that's what he was. He was a mud pie. So was I. And so what God did is he took the mud and he put it in his hands. And he became in Thank you, Jesus. the potter's hands. Yes. And I became in the potter's hands. But first, I had to be thrown down and stomped on and built up a little bit, thrown down again until I could get past myself, my pride, my perception, and understand that God had a hold of me. And Dan had to go through the same thing. And when we met six years ago, seven years ago, because we're going to be married six years, you know, we weren't the same people that we were two years prior to meeting each other. We weren't ready for each other. And so God had to transform me by his love before I could ever love myself and before I could ever receive the love that God wanted to give me through this man, even in his imperfections, and I don't always agree with everything that he does, I know he loves me. Amen. And it isn't because of what he does. It's because of what he does. Amen. Do you get that? Do you see that? Okay, so we got to get our eyes off from man. We got to get our eyes off from man because when we get our eyes on man, we get our eyes off from Christ. That doesn't mean that things aren't going wrong in your life, but God is trying to do something in you. He's trying to do something in me. 
when I get frustrated with Dan, you know, or Dan gets frustrated with me. He was up at the cross today. I'm thinking, man, is he up there writing me down? <laughs> you know, that's your first thought. But you know what? I, if it is me, I'm glad he's laying me at the foot of the cross because only God can take care of this girl. <laughs> only God can change this heart. Only God can transform me because his spirit is alive and it's living within me and I want him to. Do you want him to? <laughs> right? These things that we think are so fun and it's just what, it's, it's what is happening. It, they're really not. We're deceived. We're deceived. But until you cross over and you actually get into this place with God, you'll never know who you really are or what you were even purposed to do here on earth. I never knew. I knew that God was after me from, from a young age. But at the same time, because of my choices and where I was and what I was living and the different things that I experienced and did, I thought God cannot use this girl. Uh-uh. So then when people started speaking into my life and God started speaking into my life and God showed me in the word of God that he was calling me into ministry, I was like, oh, this is not good, Lord. You know, um, I was kidding around talking to somebody the other day. And um, so I'm going to ask you religious people to excuse me for just a moment. But I'm going to tell you something that I used to say from the pulpit all the time. In the beginning, I used to say, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Because that's where I was at. Okay? He's cleaned me up a little bit, and I'm glad. But people who were hearing me minister knew exactly what I was talking about. Right? And, and so this is the deal. You know, God... God takes us from glory to glory to glory. And so he cleaned that up. I don't say that anymore. I don't even say that like in the world. Like I would, otherwise, I, you know, for the first six years of running after Christ, I said it all the time. First six years in ministry from the pulpit, I said it all the time. And then nobody, nobody ever came to me and said, you know, you should probably clean it up. I'm kind of glad they did because I probably would have manifested and it wouldn't have been pretty. Um, <laughs> Versus the spirit of the living God that's within me. So, um, but see, God, God started showing me that it's not what it's true, you know, what I was saying, but it, it could be offensive. And this is the thing. God doesn't want us to, to be a stumbling block for people. And so that's why I say be careful when you go and be asking people questions. I just said in a discipleship class, if you got something to ask about this church and what's going on, come to me because you don't know where Mary's at and what God's doing in her life or where Marge is at. And if she's not my best friend and the person that God connected me to, if I go to ask questions, it might be a motive in my own heart. Wanting just to be nosy, you know, or wanting to know. And, and, and maybe it's a sensitive area for this person right now because something that they're walking through, I don't know. But if you don't understand the motive of your heart, you could hurt a brother or a sister because, you know, you're, you're not really called to be in their business. Amen. You know, like there's some people's business in this church I'm called to be in it. And they probably wish sometimes that someone else was called to be in their business because I'm, I'm, I just don't have kid gloves on. I just don't. Um, but there's times I'm gentle with some people because they need that gentleness, and I have the discernment from God to give that to that person. But there's also part of me that when you try to try to manipulate me or you try to tell me something that I know ain't true, I'm going to hold you accountable and tell you to get over yourself because that's what God had to do with me. And I didn't run from him because he knew that that was my language at the time. Now, my language isn't quite so hard anymore because God, you know, I'm a totally different person, but you know, all of us have a desire to run after God, but all of us can be deceived and think that we're doing good things when in reality we're just, we're just being nosy or we're wanting to know something, you know, that we really don't need to know. You know what I'm saying? And so what's the motive of your heart? Why are you in the relationship that you're in? You know, if God's called you to walk with, if God called you to work, walk with Sherry. Would your motive be to, to let God work all through you for her benefit? Because God says esteem others better than yourself. Yes. But at the same time, you're going to benefit from Sherry and the wisdom and, and the things that she has. And so then all of a sudden you start to build a relationship. And it's beautiful. 
Um, I've talked before about worship. I'm a hollower. You know, I'm like, yes, you know, there's something that just wells up inside of me. But I don't stand by next to you and do it for 10 minutes all day long. I might feel like doing it, but God says esteem others better than yourself. What if you're being a stumbling block to a brand new person in here that, that um, first of all, doesn't understand what's happening in the room, you know, but then, you know, if you're like me and you're a hollerer and you do it all the time, when I go away, God gives me wisdom, even in this room, when to, when not to. It doesn't shut my worship down because my worship comes up from within me, but there's times but I do it more by myself, worse than y'all hear it in here, because I need to have a release. And I have a sister in here that has a release like that, too. And we understand each other because we have that same thing happening, you know. But what do we do? We try to move to the front so that we're just kind of hollering at the wall just in case we scare y'all. Um, but that doesn't shut down our worship. We're just esteeming her better than me. And even though, oh, I'm free and I can just, oh, this is, it might hurt that person when God is calling them to this church, right? So we've got to understand, we have to have the gift of discernment, first of all, within ourselves. Why? Why? Why God has us do things? He says, don't be a stumbling block. Be careful. Be careful with, with each other's hearts and, and what we're doing out there in life and in the world because God wants to use y'all because you're precious and mighty in, in Christ. You're mighty in him. Amen. And so one day we're going to have a bigger room and I'm sure we'll have uh, flaggers over here and dancers over here and hollers over here and your quiet people right here. But every person is important to Christ and every form of worship is beautiful to him as long as it is from your heart to him. Amen. And so, you know, it's important if you don't know to, that what the word says and that, you know, to esteem others better than yourself, you're basically shutting down something that you can do because that's part of who you are for somebody that doesn't understand it because you're esteeming them other they're better than you are and that's not a bad thing do you understand are you picking up what I'm laying down Amen. okay so I'm telling you this because I've talked about it before and God has really shown me about this because we're gonna grow and and before um, you know we I just love what God's doing in this church, and we're being discipled so that we can be used of God. But in Luke chapter 9, um, I, I just want to now pull this word into here. And so first of all, um, I want you to go to 49. And um, this verse 49 says, Now John answered and said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbid them. Forbid him because he does not follow us. But Jesus said to him, do not forbid him who is against us is on our side. And so, you know, this is where it's kind of cool because, you know, there's people in different churches. They're doing different things. The most important thing is to understand what God is doing and to follow the yes. word and to be aware of what the word says. But if you get all haughty and all up in there, well, you know. Who does she think she is or he thinks he is? And, you know, the people at our church are being discipled. So we already know that if we're going to be given words or praying for people, have a second person there. I believe it's biblical. And if you keep reading, you'll find that it is. Um, so we're being discipled. But there are times that, you know, you're out and you're in, this, in society and God wants to use you. You just be used right there. This is our training ground. This is where we're being trained and brought up and we're learning, right? And, we're, and we, we speak to one another and we pray for one another and we love one another so that when we go out and we're used in the world, God can just move even easier through us because our minds are out of the way because we, we, we've done these things. We're not so scared, you know. We've learned to shut up when the spirit lifts, be done. Because otherwise, you can just take away, unravel everything God just did through you. Because now, your fear is starting to well up inside of you, and you're afraid. And so now you want to explain the word when God doesn't want you to explain the word. He wants his spirit to explain the word and show the word. That's right. <laughs> so, all right, 51. So it came to pass when the time came for him, capital H in the middle of a sentence means God, Jesus, to be received up, 
he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered the village of the Samaritans so um, to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set on his journey for Jerusalem. So in other words, the Samaritans and the Jews were not friendly people with one another. And so when they knew that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, they did not want him to come to Samaria. They did not receive him. And so that was why. Because why? Because of prejudice and because of times. And that's where they were. And that's in this world. And we've got to break that stuff off. And if we can work, uh, operate from a pure heart, you won't walk in that. Rather it be a religion, title, and denomination to skin color. Right? You can't do that. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only son for everybody. Amen. There's no superior. I know in the world the way that things have happened, it might appear to be, but the only superior is Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And so we have got to unite in so many different ways. You understand? In the church, I'm talking. Don't go out and try to unite the world because the world hates the church. The world does not even know the church or Christ. Why? Because the church is the bride. Christ is coming back for it. He has something that's going to happen. So he's transforming us one at a time. Not one of us are the same. It's so good. Please don't try to be like anybody else. Let Christ be who he is in you. Amen. Be transformed by his love. So the Samaritans did not want him to come. And so, um, so when his disciples... So here, here's these godly men walking next to Jesus, just loving them. What do they say? Hey, do you want us to come and fire down from heaven and consume all these people because they just dissed you, Jesus? Just like that happened to Elijah. And God, Jesus is like, uh, no, that's, no, no, don't do that. So this is, what, this is what he said. He said, but he returned and he rebuked him and said, do you know what manner of spirit you are of. This is what I've been talking about. This is what I've been leading up to. This is why I say all the time, what's the motive of your heart? Please don't beat yourself up if you've done some things and you have now realized that the motive of your heart has not been right. Be okay with that. Be like, man, God, thank you for showing me. I didn't even realize that I was doing that or I did that. Or, yeah, man, that's like me. Mm. Say, God, I give it to you. Forgive me for that. Continue to show me the motive of my heart because I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to, I don't want to do things that are not of you. I'm here to serve you with everything that's within me. So, God, please just create a pure heart in me because I esteem Tammy better than myself and, or I esteem Jan or I, I esteem Dave better than myself. I want to be used of you to help them, not, not trip them up, not hurt them, you know, not get into their business, you know. God, I, I, if you have something to say through me, I will know that and it will come out. Not through my filters, but through your spirit. Amen. Give my filters out of the way. Help me get past some of the things that I'm carrying, like self-hatred. Help me get past the fact that I'm a loser and I'm never going to change. That's not true, says the Lord. <laughs> Yes. You want to believe what your father says in heaven, not what maybe your father might have said on earth. Amen. Come on, church. You want to believe what heaven says about you versus what Pastor Joyce says about you. You want to believe what heaven says about you versus what your husband or wife says about you. You want to believe what heaven says about you no matter what you see in the mirror. <laughs> right? Amen. Come on, church. This is your responsibility. This is my responsibility. God says, what matter of spirit is happening through you right now, my precious disciples? Calling fire down and destroying my creation. Calling fire down because they, they didn't receive me. You are not going to be received. It's going to hurt. Amen. It does hurt. Because you're good. Because God says so. Yeah. And you're going to be, but, but they don't think I'm good. <laughs> Oh, I don't think I'm good. This is bad. No, God says you're good. Amen. So you have to, what did he tell his disciples? If you get to a place and you're not received, dust, get the dust off you. Don't, don't receive that dust. Don't receive that dust. That dust is damaging to who you are in Christ. 
You shake the dust off and you leave it there and you leave that place. Do you understand that? See, God is on the move. And he wants to do some great and mighty things to his people. But what happens is we think that because we've arrived or we've got Jesus, we forget that we can be used by the enemy as well. So we have got to check the motive of our heart. Why? Why are you serving in the kitchen? Because God called you to. And you do it out of love. You don't do it for recognition. I sneak in there once in a while and tell you so. thank you so much because everybody else is gone and they're still in the kitchen cleaning it up. Praise Lord. But if they were doing it for my recognition, they would be very sad because they don't get a lot of it from me because I'm super busy. And maybe you don't think to thank them. Or say, why don't you guys get out of here today? We're going to clean up the kitchen. Well, I don't want your job, but I'll do it today. That'd be me. I'll do it today, but I don't want your job. <laughs> what about everybody signing up and helping take care of the bathrooms? That's a wonderful thing, even though you have to wait until service is over and people are gone. Or if you're a Sunday person and you come on Tuesday, you can do it Tuesday. You're not doing it for any recognition. Most of the time, people don't even, don't even know who's cleaning the bathroom except Mary because she's supposed to be the keeper of the list that signs up. We need people to do those things. You know, there's so many things. Uh, Spring and Frankie are out doing kids today. And Brittany's taking care of videoing today. You know, the body works together. We need each other. But the motive of our heart has got to be pure. Amen. You know, we want to be able to, like, Miss Tina's gone for three weeks in a row. That's a lot. That's a lot for a teacher to be gone when you're dealing with kids. That's, that's hard on kids, and it's harder on teachers. Right? Yeah. But yet people are doing these things. You know, well, wow, the kids really acted up. Well, yeah, they're kids. And don't you know what happens when substitutes come in? Hello. <laughs> I know what I did when substitutes came in. So expect it. They're kids. But keep a pure heart. Don't get offended. Don't prejudge. Don't judge the kids. Parents, don't judge the teachers. It ain't okay. Don't be calling fire down on them. You'll be burning us all up. <laughs> So he turned and rebuked them and said, Do you not know what manner of spirit you are of? For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. Right. So I don't know who's been coming after you, or maybe even you've been coming after somebody else. And the spirit that's operating in you, you haven't even understood not to be the spirit of God. Because maybe it's right. Maybe these things are true. Maybe these things happen. But if God is within you, he will be the one to heal you. Amen. But not until you let go and get out of the way. So that you're not being deceived by some spirit that's operating through you. Because yeah. <laughs> we're more spirit than we are uh, flesh, right? Or uh, Yeah, we're more spirit than we are flesh. We just don't know that because we see our flesh in our body. But God is saying, listen, hello, start Checking the motive of your heart. Do you know how many texts I go to send and I realize my motive is crappy so I have to erase it? <laughs> I got one not very long ago and it wasn't that it was a bad text, but it was I was just going to respond out of my flesh. And as I'm writing, the Lord says, don't write right now. Because I had so much on my plate that I would not, it wasn't that I was in a bad place mentally, but I wouldn't have responded right because I had all this other stuff on my mind. And so what I would have responded was really from my flesh versus the spirit. So I waited on the Lord. I stopped it, and I was like, okay, I'm just, you know, oh, but they're going to be upset because I didn't respond right away. I don't respond right away a lot now because I've gotten past that fear. I think most people in this church know that I love you. But I also, just like with Miss Sherry, she knows that I love her. But I also knew that she needed time, and sometimes people need time. Amen. Because if I run after her and get her to come, now I have to maintain her. And I can't keep her happy, but Christ can. Amen. And he's blessed her. I can't come here in order for to get something from all of you guys, although you all contribute into my, into my, into my heart and into my life. But I'm here because of Jesus Christ yes. and who he is. And I want him to wear me like a glove. I want him to speak word. I want him to do what he wants to do through me. Here's my hands, Lord, and here's my feet. Use me.
But in that, I have to be willing to check my heart all the time. Am I jealous? Am I, am I listening to you, God? I want to make sure that I'm not trying to, to be in control. I want you to be in control. But I will not let somebody that tries to tell me I'm in control speak that into my life. I will come against them in a heartbeat because I fought that my whole entire life. Because the devil never wanted me to be in this position. But I also have confidence from Christ now of who I am and I can stand up. And, and you know, it's like um, somebody told me the other day, you know, um, people know, Pastor, that, that you love them and you do walk among the people, but people know who's in charge. <laughs> And, and it's not that I don't love you because you're going to get that way before, but part, part of love is discipline and accountability and all those things. But when my heart's not right, God gets a hold of me and says, listen, what spirit is controlling you right now? Why are you this way toward this person? Why? It's not because of the person. It's because of what's in my heart. Yes. And God is trying to bring the dross up through the fire so he can remove it so that I can be pure in him. And that's what he's doing in your life and mine. Amen. Amen. Here's my heart. The red one, please. Today. <coughs> Father, I thank you and praise you. You're amazing. Create pure hearts in us. Father, we're where maybe the devil's tried to bring offense into our lives today, that we take a hold of it and bring it down, that we will not allow that to be part of our lives because that's not part of who you are. Lord, I pray that you reveal in every single one of our hearts where maybe we um, have in the past did things with our motives. Our motives weren't wrong, were, were not right. God, that we would see others to be better than ourselves and be careful with them, Lord. But yet at the same time that we would come to repentance and get our hearts right in this area so that the enemy cannot use us, that spirit cannot use us to bring damage to the gospel of Christ, to the church, to each other. Oh God, reveal these things in our hearts. Create a pure heart in all of our lives because here's our hearts, Lord. And from this day forward that we hear your voice quickly if all of a sudden our motive is self-satisfaction. If it's condemnation to somebody. If it's judgment or being critical that you quickly show us, God, these things about us that are hidden. <laughs> oh, turn over the rocks in our hearts that are hard. Smash them, Lord, and have your way in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. amen. Okay, so I do have a couple words. I know I got some new people here, but um, this young man with the bright eyes. Tell me your name again. Cal. Cal. So um, the first thing that I noticed about you is that you do have really bright eyes. And so um, the Lord said to tell you that you bring light into places that are dark. And you might not see that about yourself, but you do. Um, you can change atmospheres once you can get past of some of the stuff that you're suffering. And one thing that I believe you've been carrying for a little while is guilt and condemnation, like bad. No matter what anybody has ever said to you, you've never been able to get past that. And so today, I just want you to know that if you'll just lift that up to Jesus, Jesus will remove that from you because that's not his will. His will is for you to be the light of the world, for you to walk into situations and help people that have been experiencing and have walked through some of the things that you have that see what the devil meant for harm in your life God wants to turn it around and use it for glory and he has put an anointing upon you to do that but that anointing only comes with the spirit of God and so I just want to give you that to think about and just to allow yourself to be able to meditate on that with the Lord um, so that you can understand because God loves you and he's never forgotten you and he's never walked away from you and even if you have at different times in your life with him he still is there and he wants you to walk as the light of the world by his spirit um, and only that happens by the indwelling of who he is but you have to allow that to happen in your life but he says it's in you it's in you and so the reason this word is coming forth to you today is because your eyes are bright and God used that to highlight you to me to be able to speak into your life. Amen. Amen. So that's for you today.
Yeah, God is good. And then for you, um, tell me your name again. Shana. Shana. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so Shana, um, I feel like the Holy Spirit is just going to wrap his love around you. I feel like the love that you've known has been the love that kicks you to the curb in the world. You've tried. You'd be like, when people reject you, you try to become the person that they gave you reasons why. I rejected you because you were this and you didn't do that. And so your next relationship, you try to be that. And so that doesn't work either. And so you get it again. And so what God wants you to do is take all that rejection and lay it down at the foot of the cross today. Don't receive it anymore because it's almost like like, um, like when I was young, young adult, your age, and up to my until in my 40s, I felt like I had this black cloud over my head, and no matter what I did, no matter what I tried, it just never left me. And I want you to know that stuff is true. That really was happening in my life, and I see that over you. And I think you even might have even said that, like no matter what I do, nothing ever is right. So I want you today before you leave. You go spend some time at that altar and you write that stuff down, but this is what I want you to do while you're up there. Say, Lord, this black cloud in the name of Jesus needs to leave now. Amen. I am not leaving this room the way that I came in. I want you to cover me with your Holy Spirit. Okay? I want you to do that today. Miss Mary, would you help her do that today? See, Miss Mary, that's Ray's wife. You guys probably know Ray, or if you don't know Ray, he's at the center. Would you just help her? Because that's a lot I just put on her plate. No more. Just that is just what she needs to say. Can, were you okay with that? I put you on the spot, so you can't like really say anything else, right? Okay, all right. Thank She'll you. do it. Yes, yes, you're welcome. And so this is this is good. So, yeah, God is good. So hang on just a second. I want to make sure that um, I'm not gonna like walk out and not speak what God wants me to speak. So, all right. And so the guy next to right there next to Cal with the glasses. Your name? Taylor. Taylor. All right, Taylor. So you're like a class clown, and you make everybody laugh, and like you do silly things in the middle of serious moments. And the Lord says that that's actually a facade. It's covering up uh, you not wanting to be rejected, you not wanting to allow people too close into your life. And so God says that this is the thing. He gave you that personality for a reason. It's a good thing. Okay? It is a good thing. But... What, what's happened is it's also been a place for you to hide behind. It's like a shield. And the Lord says that he really wants that shield to be removed so that, yes, you can do those things, but not for the same reason. Because, again, rejection comes against you big time. And I want you to know you're not rejected of the Lord. Are you hearing me? Because I'm hearing that really loud. Okay, I think you have to make some decisions in your future to please him, but you're not rejected. The only way we're rejected is if we reject him. You understand? We don't, God don't send us to hell. We send ourselves there Amen. because we were, we're like, God, oh, you can't be part of my life. I'm not going to believe in you. I'm not going to let him do the change from the inside out. But listen, listen. Listen, and you, do you like music? Do you play music? No, I don't. Do you like music? Absolutely. Okay, I, I feel like you need to get involved in music. I don't know if you've ever thought about it. I got a guy at the rehab teaching me guitar right now. All right, that's what I was hearing, that you need to get into music because you're going to be able to release some things you haven't been able to release through music. And that God, now listen to me because it's real easy to get into all the music of the world. But I know you need to learn, but I want you to, I want you to, when you get into this, I want you to lift your guitar up and give it to the Lord and ask him to give you the gift of this. Because I believe he's going to bring, first of all, healing through music to you because you don't trust people really well. And um, I think through music, you're going to be able to express some things, to release some things so they're not all up here. But eventually, you're going to walk into a place where you're able to trust the Lord, first of all, and then you'll be able to trust people. It's not that, you know, we always say, I don't trust anybody, because that's where I was at. What I learned to do is trust the Lord. And so God has gifted you for music, but it's going to be for heaven. It might start out worldly, but remember this day, because the anointing is going to come from heaven, and it is for heaven and it will touch many people's lives as you transform by him and you come out of a healing into a new place with the Lord so yeah so I'm just confirmation that you're doing the right thing there that's awesome. yeah so that's really good yes yeah, so I'm, I'm on a roll so I might as well stop with you too and 
Um, you know, I, again, I just feel like I, I want that the Lord wants you to start speaking to people eye to eye. That a lot of times you cast your eyes down um, because you know you don't want them to be able to read you and see you and see your pain because you just have to be this this you're a big guy, you know, tough guy. And sometimes people think that you know your shoulders are to carry everybody else's pain and everybody else's problems. And what God wants you to do is to surrender those things to him because he's the burden carrier. Okay, so the yoke that he will put on you will be light. It doesn't mean you won't have problems in life, but what's happened is you've tried to carry everybody else's problems that you haven't been able to take care of yourself. And God wants you to take care of yourself that, so that you can become strong in him, an inner strength that will come in and out of you by the Spirit of God. Because you do have listening ears for people. Again, this is a gift from heaven. But first of all, God wants to heal you so that you can carry the burdens that people put to you that you can carry the burdens to the cross and give them to the Lord and lead those people to the way maker, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So that's for you today. Yeah. And then for you, tell me your name again. Kyle. Kyle. So Kyle, you're kind of cool. And you are. You're a guy that sits back. You observe people. And you're just, you know, you're, you're, your mind is really busy. And you're always, like, uh, you're always looking. And you are, like, letting it soak in and you're trying to figure out what's real, what's false, what's good, what's bad. So what I want to speak to you today is um, I was going to go and read about these different gifts from the Holy Spirit. One of them is discernment. Well, part of that discernment, first of all, is always within. But I believe that you have discernment and I believe it's from the Lord because these are spiritual gifts. They operate in the world. You're born with these gifts and callings, but when you give them to heaven and you walk in them, they increase and they're used for the kingdom of glory and they are to help other people and other people that you're around. But a lot of times, like the gift of discernment is really kind of a self-protective mode for us. Like, oh, I'm not too sure I'm going to let you in my circle or be around me that is important but sometimes your perception isn't always um, right because of your own wounds and so I realize we all have wounds in this room but I do believe that God wants to heal your wounds while you're here so it's really important that you let that stuff out whether you write it down and put it up here but actually Craig we are going to burn that Thursday it's overflowing um but again, you can write things down and bring it here. It's a gift from God. It's really kind of neat. Um, I believe that God is going to strengthen you, strengthen you in your mind, you know, to greater things. You're going to have a greater understanding of things you didn't before. Um, I believe that, that you have a heart for people, but you're still kind of protective. But um, you see beyond the surface of a person, and that's the discernment that I'm talking about. Like, they can be talking to you all day long, and you're like, yeah, well, not really, because this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm seeing. And it's not that you're trying to be critical and judgmental. It's really a spiritual gift, but it's for heaven. And I believe God's going to show you what that's all about. So, yeah. Before you leave, I'm going to show you in the Word where that is so you can go read it for yourself, okay? And God will show you. I mean, before I was running after him, he showed me these different gifts that I had, and one of them is discernment. So I really understand that gift. So, yeah. Isn't God so cool? He hasn't forgotten about you, by the way, just letting you know that. I was just patting you, and the Lord got me stuck on you. Sometimes you feel like you're forgotten, you know, like you're just outcast. God says you are not, and you need to understand that even though things aren't going the way that you perceive them to go and that you thought they were going to go, especially coming into Manistee and where you're at, you thought, okay, I'm going to do this, 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 and all this stuff is going to happen. It's not happening. So you're getting a little bit discouraged and a little bit downhearted. The Lord says don't allow that to happen. Trust him because the plan that he has for you is good. Don't get distracted by disappointments, okay? Because disappointments bring anger, and then anger brings unbelief. And there's so many different things, and you start to go backwards. The Lord says, you have taken these steps, and maybe for other people to begin with, but it was part of his plan for you and you alone. And so just allow yourself the time to just focus on you, okay? Without having to have people accept you. You don't need that right now because you're accepted from heaven, Amen. right? Thank you. Amen. 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 Okay, I better quit because I feel like I could just go through the whole room right now. We would be here until forever, right? Praise the Lord. Yeah. 